Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Over the past week I've been painting on Archer's rough watercolour paper and used it for this sweet little badger painting. I wanted to see how this more textured surface differed from the cold press watercolour paper I usually paint on and I thought it might be helpful to share some of the watercolour techniques I use as well as the conclusions I've come to in case any of you have ever thought about trying it out for yourself. So I hope you enjoy the video. All the materials I'm using today will be listed in the description box along with a reference photo from Pixabay. So let's get started. I began by drawing my outline sketch onto a separate piece of drawing paper first and then used the reverse transfer method to transfer my sketch onto the watercolour paper. This way I can correct any mistakes on my drawing paper and not have to erase anything on the watercolour paper. I did use a kneaded eraser to gently lift and lighten my pencil lines, but erasing lines completely is a lot harder to do on textured paper, and pressing hard with a regular eraser may even flatten or damage the tooth of the paper. So it's a good idea to get your sketch right before you transfer it over onto the watercolour paper. With that done though, I prepared the colours I was going to use. So here I've got some watery ultramarine blue, some grey that I mixed with ultramarine and burnt sienna, and a dark brown black that I mixed using burnt umber and neutral tint. The first technique I tried was to combine both the wet on wet and the wet on dry method to put in a base layer on the lightest part of the badger's face. So I first painted some first strokes with just clean water using an upward flicking motion with my brush and then dipped into the French Ultramarine and applied this in the same way. I wanted to get a mixture of hard and soft edges here to add variety and interest and prevent me from going in with too much fur detail on this first light wash. Whilst the paper was still damp, I also added in some of my grey mixture around the nose and being careful to apply the paint in the direction of fur growth. On the right side of the badger's face where the light was hitting it, I decided to add in a bit more of a pinky brown hue, which I'd made by mixing Windsor Red and Burnt Umber together. But I applied this as I had done before, brushing on clean water first and then adding in paint in the direction of fur growth. I also added in some more French ultramarine and some grey and let the colours mix where the paper was still damp. On the left side of the face though I used the wet on dry technique as I wanted a bit more texture here. So I used my grey paint mix onto the dry paper and this gave me more control of where the paint was going and allowed me to map out the different sections of fur more accurately. I used this same wet on dry technique to paint in the dark details on the badger's eyes. I had wondered if this rougher paper surface would prevent me from getting nice smooth edges or fine details, but I didn't notice any difference to my cold press paper, which was good. I did use the tip of my size 4 brush rather than swap down to a smaller brush though, which might have helped as it holds more liquid than a smaller brush, keeping the flow of paint and water more constant for achieving those smooth even lines. On to the nose next and looking back at my reference photo I could see a lot of different colours and textures here. I began by painting in some of the main shapes and details wet on dry using my pinky brown mix and some of the grey. I also used some of the dark brown mix I'd made up earlier to carefully paint around the highlights on the right hand side. And I dropped some of this same colour into the damp paper to give the nose a bit of texture. Next I added some violet on top of the grey and softened out the edges with a clean damp brush. I then used my dark brown black mix to outline the shape of the nose and let that paint bleed out into the violet. I really liked how these colours blended together, so for the underside of the nose, I decided to use the wet on wet technique and use that same bleeding out effect for the darker outside edge. So I pre wet the paper and dropped in some of the brown and neutral tint mix. And then, whilst that was still damp, used the tip of my brush to paint around the edge. 
I marked in the placement of the nostrils too, using neutral tint again. I carried this neutral tint up and around the rest of the nose to add depth and a bit more detail. And then on dry paper used the very tip of my brush and a tiny flicking motion to paint in the mouth. I painted a bit of warmer burn umber here too, but tried to leave some of the white of the paper for the whiskers. Then I went back in and glazed over some Mission Gold Magello Blue to help make the nose look really bright and shiny. On to the ears next and up until now I've mostly been working on dry paper and I haven't finished with that yet but I have also been curious to see if this heavily textured rough paper might stay wet longer than the medium textured cold press paper. This would give me more time to work on it which is an advantage if you're painting larger areas or want to mix several different colours onto the paper whilst it's still damp. So I pre-wet the whole of the left ear with clean water and I'm dropping in some more of my neutral tint and burn umber paint mix using a larger size 8 brush. I drop in some Windsor Violet too whilst the paper is still wet, just to add interest and I let the colours bleed together on the surface of the damp paper. I approach the second ear in a similar way, but add more neutral tint and violet shades this time, as there's more light on this side of the face. And I wet one section of the ear at a time rather than the whole ear at once, just to separate the areas out and make it easier for me to paint the whole ear accurately. I can soften out any hard edges I don't want and I use the tip of my brush to pull out some of the wet paint onto the dry areas to give some nice fur detail. So here I'm wetting the paper, adding a lighter brown, dropping in darker paint and letting it mix together on the surface of the paper and I'm pulling some of that wet paint onto the dry paper to create some sharper fur detail. I loved using this method on this paper but I don't know that I could honestly say it's that much different to cobra's paper in terms of drying time, but I do like the way you get natural texture where the paint still skips over the surface of the paper in some areas. I decided to go back and darken up the badger's eyes next with more concentrated neutral tint and burnt umber. And despite the fact that I was able to paint details okay, I do think that maybe you lose a bit of the colour brightness and vibrancy on this paper. Maybe it's because there's less light reflecting back of the bumpy surface compared with hot pressed and even cold pressed paper. But let me know what you think. Have you used rough pressed paper before and do you find your colours are duller compared with other paper surfaces? Anyway, once the eyes had dried and for the area around the eyes where the fur is shorter and slightly lighter, I used my grey mixture again which I made from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna and painted this onto dry paper, softening out any hard edges I didn't want with a clean damp brush. I added in some violet and some of the darker neutral tint burn umber mix where the fur gets darker, pulling some of that wet paint out onto the dry paper again. Underneath the eye I used the wet on wet technique again to quickly paint in the rest of this section of fur. I used grey watercolour paint as a base and dropped in a bit of French ultramarine blue onto the wet paper where I could see it on the reference photo. Moving down the side of the face now and the fur colour here is more dark brown than grey and it's more out of focus and fuzzy so I pre-wet the area first with clean water before applying burnt umber. I didn't use any masking fluid on this one so I made sure to leave some gaps in the fur where the whiskers are. I'm pre-wetting the area under the badger's chin now and dropping in that burnt umber and neutral tint mix again but it's got a bit more burnt umber in it this time. 
I add in a bit of violet too. With the other side of the face done, I started to paint in the longer fur at the top here. I pre-wet the paper on this lighter section and painted some sepia onto the damp paper, pulling out some of the paint onto the dry paper to create some fur texture with the tip of my brush. Because the paper is damp, I can add in other colours too, like some of the grey and violet. For the longer fur above the badger's eye, I wanted to really take advantage of this rough paper surface and build in some more texture. So after applying paint to my brush, I dabbed off the excess water onto a paper towel before applying it to the paper. I was still careful to match the length and direction of my brush strokes with the reference picture, but I really liked the way the dryer brush skipped over some parts of the paper leaving some of the white showing through. It's a really quick, easy and quite effective way of painting animal fur or hair, either as a technique on its own or like I've done in combination with other techniques, depending on the look you're going for. You can also build on this first layer and add in more texture or colour with further layers. I needed to darken up my values here, so I added another layer of indigo and neutral tint to get the contrast I wanted. I painted some of the same darker fur colour around the badger's eye too, and tried to build in more fur texture by painting onto dry paper again following the length and direction of fur growth around the face here to help it look more natural and realistic. I used the same technique on the other side of the face too, but tried using more of the belly of the brush rather than the tip, which covered a larger area more quickly and still gave me similar results. This is good to know if you want to paint bigger projects or maybe try loose landscapes or seascapes for example and it might also be worth experimenting with different brushes as well if you have them available. I applied several more layers onto these darker fur stripes waiting for each layer to dry in between and using the dry brush technique to build texture and depth until I was happy with the result. I also darkened up the eyes and painted another layer onto the nose to bring the values into line with the rest of the face. Then I turned my attentions to the badger's chest and body. Here I wanted to use the wet on wet technique again, so prepared sepia and neutral tint before wetting my paper. I've switched over to a larger size 12 brush here, and I'm simply dropping in first sepia, then neutral tint, and letting the paint bleed over the surface of the wet paper. I use a lot of neutral tint in my paintings, but I have noticed that there's quite a lot of colour shift when it's dry, and I have to add further layers to get the value and colour intensity that I want so I might have to experiment with mixing my own version of it that doesn't do this. As I added subsequent layers though, I was able to build in some loose fur texture using sweeping strokes with my brush and pulling the paint onto the dry paper on the left hand side. It was back to sepia and a bit of indigo next to paint the lighter fur on the badger's back and I applied this onto dry paper again, just loosely marking out some shapes that I could see in the reference photo, but not worrying about it being too accurate as I wanted the main focus to be on the badger's face. I'm using my brush very dry here so there's quite a lot of the paper showing through on this first layer and that mimics the white hair showing through on this part of the badger's coat. The paint dries quite quickly because there's not much water, so I can quite quickly and easily start to build up the darker layers of the fur here too. <laughs> 
I'm still using a very dry brush, but I'm using more concentrated sepia and some neutral tint on top. Then it's just one more section of fur to paint in, and that's this slightly out of focus area at the top. So because I don't want to fuss too much with detail here, I go back to the wet on wet technique, pre-wetting my paper first before dropping in paint. I start to drop in some darker shapes onto the damp paper, keeping an eye on my reference photo but more for the values and general shapes. I'm not looking to copy this part exactly. I built up my layers gradually using the same wet on dry technique until I was happy with the values and level of contrast. But the darkest fur area still didn't seem quite right. So instead of my neutral tint, I mixed up some more of Mission Gold's Magello Blue and added a bit of Indian Red and painted that onto the darker fur areas, which I really think helped to bring it to life. Now all that was left to do was to paint the background. I wasn't sure whether or not to even paint a background, but I asked for your opinion on my Instagram stories and by a small margin, the vote was in favour of the background. So thank you to all of you who voted. It took the decision out of my hands, which was much appreciated. I didn't want to go for just green though, like the reference photo, and instead chose French ultramarine blue, which I'd used to mix the grey in some of the fur, so I thought it would go well. And as luck would have it, I also discovered something else about the rough watercolour paper. French ultramarine is a granulating colour which means the pigment separates out onto the surface of the paper to create some interesting effects. On rough paper with its more textured surface, this separation is more obvious. And I really like the result. So I went for a loose wet on wet background and lifted out some bright sunspots using a dry piece of kitchen towel to create a sort of bokeh effect. It was really simple, but I think it helped to show up the white fur on the top of the ears and around the face. The granulation also added a bit more texture, which I did really like. To finish this painting off as a last finishing touch, I added some white gouache to just brighten up the fur on the right hand side, add a few flyaway hairs and neaten up the whiskers. I really enjoyed painting on this rough watercolour paper, and I think it would be great for adding texture to any painting. The only real downsides for me is that maybe the colours are slightly duller than cold press paper and the surface would not be suitable for drawing on with a dip pen and ink as it's just too bumpy to get crisp lines. But let me know what you think. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and comment below and please consider subscribing if you're watching my channel for the first time. Don't forget as well, there's still a big sale on in my Etsy shop, which is on until the end of October, and I'll put details in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, have a great week, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!